Welcome to classes on coordination compound and it is the continuation of class number 29. It is higher secondary second year and it is the last class of the construction class basing upon or aiming at the CUT and NWT exam, the class is structure. Please minutely follow and without wasting time. Let me first start with some key notes and key points for which you very often spend time. Electronic configuration. You may think that why it is needed. You will in due course of time you will find the application of the method or the trick which I will explain here. So why I have written in this way you just keep it in your mind the atomic number of chromium is 24 so here it is it is d4 it is 25 is d5 26 is d6 27 is d7 28 is d8 29 is d9 but the problem with these two you keep it in your mind and from first year you have already known writing the configuration like this. But other things will remain the same. What about the atomic number? The last is 5 is D5, 6, D6, 7, D7, 8, D8. But 9, 10 and 4 is 5. These are the, the way of writing the electronic configuration. You need not to write all this 1 is twice is twice, 3 is twice, 4 is twice in this way input and feed the electrons and find. No need to do these things. And these things is very often used in balance bond and crystal field theory. My main focus on today's class is on balance bond and crystal field theory. A lot of question on balance bond, hybridization, structure, octahedral, tetrahedral, square planar, uh, magnetic property, paramagnetic, diamagnetic. All this will come from balance bond and crystal field theory. And to find out the hybridizations and all this, you need to know the configuration of this one. And I have shown you the the shortcut way of writing the configuration so that you can just manage the time in the exam hall so without any confusion now here mu is equal to n into n plus 2 bore magneton am i right so that mu whether it is paramagnetic or diamagnetic whatever it is if it is diamagnetic no question is to find out mu and if it is paramagnetic so that n represents number of unpaired electron number of unpaired electron number of unpaired electron if n is equal to 1 you put 1 and 1 and you find out the results if it is n is equal to 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 unpaired electrons you then finally calculate the value with mu is equal to by n to n plus 2 bm bore magneton so this will give you the value of mu and greater the value of mu greater is the uh, attraction towards the magnet greater is mu greater mu greater paramagnetic paramagnetic and if it is not attracted by the magnet at all is called diamagnetic am i right very often asked to find which one is more paramagnetic than this one which has more lone pair of electron which and uh, is diamagnetic and uh, you, you will be given two or three uh, complex and you will be asked to arrange an increasing order of paramagnetic behavior then you will need to find out mu and it will take time again i am showing you the trick then if you see how to how to know how many lone pairs of electrons are there i will in due course of time i explain it is very easy how to find out but how to calculate if unpaired electron if you calculate is one two three four five six how will you, the instant of time you will find out the value of mu it is another three if n is equal to one say by any means you have i will show you the way how to find out the uh, unpaired electron 
I will show you later only please uh, be patient and say if number of unpaired electron is 1 this will be 1.7 you put the balloon you no need to calculate you just write 1.7 both magneton if it is 2 2.7 if it is 3 3.8 is 4 equal to 4.8 5 equal to 5.9 it is 6.9 7 7.9 no change then now you see uh, this 2 2 2 are same two number is 1.7 2.7 3.8 4.8 then 9 is constant you write 9 5.9, 6.9, 6.9, like this. Am I right? Now, how I have calculated? If it is 1, there is 1. If it is 2, there is 2. If it is 3, there is 3. If it is 4, there is 4. If it is 5, there is 5. If it is 6, there is 6. Am I right? So, no need to calculate, put the value and multiply and find the root of it. It will take time in exam. So, first, you just show, um, uh, um, recall my technique 1.7, 7, 2.7, 3.8, 3.8, 4.8, 5.9, 6.9, 7.9, 8.9, 9. 9 all are same. Now, so I have told you uh, the electronic configuration so also uh, find out uh, the paramagnetic behavior with the help of the unpaired electrons and if the number of unpaired electrons is 1, 2, 3, 4, how to calculate the value, I have given you the shortcut. Very simple. Again, I will coming a bit later. Now, what is spectrochemical series? That is some ligands are arranged in increasing order of the stank. Ligands are arranged. Ligands are arranged. I am not writing all these things, I will explain a bit later. So, the ligands are arranged in increasing order of the strength. It is seen that CO is the highest crystal field splitting strength, crystal field theory I will explain, crystal field splitting strength meant it will split the d orbital 5 blocks, 5 d orbital 5, 1, 2, 3, I will show you. 5 d orbital levels has been split into 3 and 2 or 2 and 3, 3 and 2 and that splitting is called the strength. Some ligand has the ability to split with later gap of energy and some ligand has the ability to split the 5 orbital degenerate orbital into 2 levels 3 and 2 octahedral splitting, 3 and 2 is a lesser energy gap and some has the ability to split this 5 into 2 and 3 with a big gap of energy. The uh, a limit, a ligand which has the ability to split the 5 degenerate energy level of the D block into bigger gap energy. These are called higher strength and those who cannot split at too much extent of big energy gap are called weaker ligand. So, depending upon this weaker ligand, very important mind that weaker ligand and that is actually targeted from ammonia. From ammonia onward, some sometimes excluding from ammonia onward towards rights, all are all are stronger ligand, stronger ligand or strong field ligand and from ammonia or excluding ammonia, left side of it is called weak field ligand, weak field 
weak field ligand strong field ligand means here splitting energy gap is more of the degenerate orbital uh, i will explain so first of all you should know what are weak field ligand ammonia sometimes strong field weak field there are a lots of reason about it so for time being you assume that it is weak field ligand so ammonia towards left all are weak field ligand and ammonia excluding ammonia all towards right are called strong field ligand means they had the ability to split the octahedral structure or the degenerate five energy level into three and two with a bigger gap of energy has the strong are called strong field ligand so in strong field ligand uh, we get here cyanide is there cyanide and co these are in the topmost top level these are strong field ligand and lots of examples are there are very often acting in the exam entrance exam so also in the class exam and we feel link to aqua chloride bromide all are with it except this there is en also sometimes there is ita also in i am not writing all this i am just taking of this strong field ligand these are also strong field ligand so you just keep it in mind strong field ligands are cyanide and cobalt and uh, with, uh, uh, en and ita and with ligands uh, um, excluding or including there is a problem with this one uh, it is sometimes strong sometimes weak but we will assume here it's weak weak, weak field ligands uh, these ligands are this these ligands are strong field ligands because i very often i uh, using the term strong field ligand mind the strong field ligand has the ability to speed the degenerate energy level into huge gap of the energy now in entrance exam a question very often asks in higher higher entrance exam why cyanide why this is called strong field ligand number 1 it is pseudo pseudo halide or pseudo halogen like chloride bromide iodide this is cn negative is pseudo halogen or pseudo halide am i right number 1 why it is strong field ligand number it is pseudo halides number 2 it has maximum ability to coordinate with the metal atom maximum ability number 2 very very important fact number 3 it has the ability to form pi bond from metal to ligand and sigma bond pi bond and sigma bond with when it is pi bond means that c means carbon carbon to metal bond occurs it is called pi and when it is sigma simultaneously what happen metal makes bond it is called back bonding with the carbonyl carbon so two types of bonding it can show pi bond carbon makes bond with the carbon of carbon carbonyl makes a bond with the metal it is sigma and pi bond metal d and p star of non metal metal d orbital and p pi star of carbon of carbon so metal d and p pi d p pi d pi d p pi bonding back bonding unusual things mind that back bonding and at lots of question asks on back bonding only because of these facts cn is a strong field it breaks or splits the five degenerate energy into two part one is above other is below below part is called t2g and above part is called eg and this level is called energy gap that energy gap is huge if it is weak 
like water aqua or cn cl bromide then this gap will be small a bit later when we will explain crystal field theory i will explain this thing for time being i have told you that spectrochemical series some ligands are strong field you keep it in your mind for time being and some ligands are weak field ligand strong field ligands place the d orbital into with a greater gap and weak field ligand will split the degenerate d, degenerate d level into smaller gap of into uh, two pairs with smaller gap of energy am i up to this much you keep for time being now let me give you some idea one is d2 sp3 other is sp3 d2 this is octahedral why because 2 1 3 and 3 6 means coordination number 6 means the figure is octahedral figure the geometry is octahedral geometry bond angle is 90 axial and equatorial in last class i mentioned bond angle is 90 90 degree uh, four are in same plane four ligand are in same plane and two ligands there is central metal is above and below the plane and the angle is 90 degree. this is called octahedral geometry am i right so now my concept my explanation here is d2 to d2 sp3 is called inner orbit a lots of question marks inner orbit complex or orbital com complex and this is called outer orbit or orbital complex so how we will understand d2 sp3 is inner and sp3 d2 is inner simply when d is inside means inner orbital complex and when d is outside both are octahedral means outer orbital com complex when i will explain balance bond theory of formation of the complex i will explain how you will detect whether inner d is utilized in bonding or outer d is utilized in bonding if inner d is utilized in bonding or hybridization then it is called inner orbital complex if outer d is utilized in bonding it is called outer orbital complex in my course of discussion in balance bond theory i will explain how inner and how outer is used in hybridization of uh, in balance bond theory another is high spin complex high spin complex and next one is low spin complex high spin complex means again in balance bond theory we will find if the number of unpaired electron unpaired electron is small this will high spin complex if the number of unpaired electron is less it is called it is called low spin complex now how it will be unpaired electron in the hybridization is more and how will be unpaired electron in hybridization will be less if the ligand attached with the central metal is is strong field ligand strong field ligand then unpaired electron is weak field ligand then unpaired electron is less and if ligand surrounding the central metal is strong field ligand that will give you number of unpaired electron less number of unpaired unpaired electron and this is due to strong field ligand so my concept is that high high spin complex where number of unpaired electron is more miss weak field ligand if ligand is weak then it is called high spin complex that is number of unpaired electron is more if it is low spin complex then number of unpaired electron is less and number of unpaired electron will be less if the ligand is strong field ligand and hence i have written strong field ligand if number of unpaired electron is more then it is more paramagnetic more paramagnetic more attracted towards the mag magnet and if number of electron is unpaired electron is less 
then it is less paramagnetic. Very simple. Now a question may arise in your mind, how you will calculate that it has one or two or three or four or if this has one or this has two unpaired electron. Again in balance bond theory I am going to explain. So minutely follow if the number of unpaired electron is more it is high spin complex the ligand should be weak and if number of unpaired electron is less the ligand should be strong spin ligand and it is less paramagnetic and earlier is more paramagnetic. Now question is why such things happen? Now let me explain with example. Say D6 configuration. I have done an electronic configuration of the metal which has D has 6 electron. I don't know what is that metal and I don't know what is the number of ligand, what type of the ligand attached with it. I don't know. Let me assume if 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 D6 means crystal field splitting, I am going to come I am coming it later on. Say the splitting is like this, it is EG, it is T2G. Am I right? Energy gap is this much. This much is energy gap. This much is energy gap. And another case. Energy gap is this. In both the cases we have seen here energy gap is more, here energy gap is this. So from my discussion or explanation, I told you if the ligands are strong, then energy gap of splitting of two degenerate orbitals, two types of orbitals will be more. If the ligand attached with the metal is weak, then the gap is less. So I want to, I want to populate these two level T2G EG level of electron with six number of electron. Say the ligand uses strong field ligand. I have attached strong field ligand with the metal and I want to populate six electron in two level. I know if the strong field ligand is attached with this, so energy gap is more. So what will happen? Energy according to uh, Hohn's rule, electron should singly occupied singly first, then pairing start. So six electron, one electron here, other electron here, other electron here. Or you can write in the same level of three, give same level. Okay. You can write in this way. In this way, you can write. This represents also correct. Say I am showing in this way. One, two, three. So remaining three electron is here. That electron, whether it will go to upper antibonding orbital or EG or this, no, it will not go because here the energy gap is high. So it starts pairing. But same D5, same D5, if it is weak field ligand, if same D6 is required to be populated here in the two energy level T2G EG. And if the ligands are weak, then energy gap is small. So due to small energy gap, according to Hund's rule, the electron should say, you can write in this way, you can write in this way, this two represent in this way. One, two, three, four, five, remaining one, six. You see the population of electron is different. Here, due to the less gap in energy, one, two, three, it has gone up, all singly first, up and below. G2 G E G singly first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Energy gap is less, jumps to the upper one. Then pairing start it has come to this one. So this is the fact. If the ligand is strong field ligand, that is forceful pairing. Forceful pairing occurs. Means it is forceful pairing. If the ligand is strong, energy gap is more. Forceful pairing. And if ligand is weak, no forceful pairing occurs. Means forceful pairing is not that it is not forcibly spared up. 
am i right so due to this fact when strong field ligand is attached with the metal so naturally number of unpaired electron is less because it is paired up unpaired electron less and if it is weak field ligand no forceful pairing number of unpaired electron is more unpaired electron is more so if forceful pairing means strong ligand is attached unpaired electron is less due to forceful pairing and it is less attracted by magnet and this will be more attracted by magnet am i clear this is background of the chapter's concept basing upon this everything will revolve so now let me come to the main point main point is uh, let us take an example d2 sp3 and i have told you d is back is inner so it is inner orbital complex hybridization uh, let me take an example hexamine chloride 3 plus so let us start balance bond theory i am not giving you the background simple no need to explain i will explain practically see balance bond theory. very often question comes from here you minutely follow in entrance exam minutely follow if you solve out all the objective question question all the other objective questions and if you think that you can answer without the knowledge your all attempts will be in vain it will be futile it is not fruitful mind that develop your concept increase your con concept and reach your concept everything you can answer am i right don't be ready made balance bond theory what it tells the chromium at the very beginning i told you the configuration of chromium is d5 d5 but mind that here s is one it is four and it is three uh, let me write no matter sorry uh, it is three and it is four am i right or you can write 3d and 4s nothing else you write now second thing is that i will i will find out the hybridization you are asked if it is asked what is this hybridization or if you may ask whether it is in orbital complex what is uh, outer orbital complex what is this paramagnetic nature what is a uh, low um low spin complex or it is a uh, high spin complex each and every question answer i will solve out from this but i need to find out first hybridization what is that hybridization how will you find chromium is this much now what is its balance uh, oxidation state 6060 is equal to 3 the balance state is 3 so chromium 3 what will be its what will be its i am telling what will be its and figures i am telling say first chromium always in dsp always arrange in dsp form dsp form again later on i will tell sometime it will be spd form first you assume it assume it in this way ds always dsp 3d 4s 4p so it is how many block 1 2 3 4 and it is 1 3 it is known to you so when chromium is chromium so i need to i i, I need to place 5 5 5 1 2 3 4 5 in, in in 4 s how many one i will do it a bit fast you just follow this thing now when chromium is 3 plus what's happened means 3 electron will be lost Three electron will be one from here, other from here, other from here. Up to this much, electron will be lost. So you are getting one, two, three. One, two, three. These three electron will be lost. 
simple another thing minutely follow this ligand is weak field ligand no forceful pairing if it is strong field we will forcibly pair it no pairing will start it is not strong field ligand it is weak field ligand very beginning i told you so no forceful pairing it is weak field ligand no pairing here so what's happen here is that it will be hybridized it will hybridized how many d 1 2 d 2 d 1 s 3 p i have got d 2 s p 3 how many 1 2 3 4 5 6 d 2 s p 3 hybridized orbit all has equivalent energy that is hybridized from hybridization we know this concept am i right now now what is the Uh, uh, formula of the complex. The formula of the complex. The chromium three in this complex. Chromium three in this complex is simply you write all this. I am not writing. I one I am showing you. One two three four. One one two. So one two three. Uh, here ammonia. Ammonia has lone pair. It will give electron to the back end B orbital. So here two given by ammonia, two, 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 two ammonia, 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 chromium ammonia three. It is sp three D. Hybridization is octahedral, and since inner D is utilized in forming the complex, it's inner D orbital, and it is highly attracted by the magnetic paramagnetic because it's it has got three lone pair, lone pair electron number is equal to three. Now what I told you, if it is three, answer will be three point eight. So the mu value is three point eight. Along with this, I have told you a lot. So now, first of all, what is hybridization? Sp D two sp three. What is uh, its geometry? Octahedral. What type of complex? Inner orbital complex. What is the status of ligand? Weak field ligand. How many unpaired electron? Three unpaired electrons are there. What is the value of mu? Three point eight bm. Without calculation, we are telling. Am I right? So, a lots of questions answer we have given from hybridization. So this is one example of balance bond theory and hybridization. Let me take. A, we don't know the hybridization. Let us test. What is the hybridization of this? What is the complex? It is inner field complex. It is outer field complex. What is its uh, uh, status? It is weak field ligand. It is a high spin or low spin or number of unpaired. Let us all will explain. What titanium? The configuration. Sorry, nickel configuration is. Ah, uh, it is. It is already. I have shown the backside is S two. I have shown you. Am I right? Now, what is hybridization? It is zero. N is equal to two. Means N I two positive. No need to explain the oxidation state. It is given. N in water is equal to zero. So zero equal to zero is equal to two. So N equal to two plus. Let us see. Let us see what happens here. So the beauty of coordination chemistry is. So how many electron we need to put here is eight electron singly first one two three four five six eight pairing then pairing start singly first then pairing full full am I right so we have got the population of eight electron in this way in nickel now what is nickel two plus simply two electron will be lost so you see one two three four one One two, am I right? Now you see two electron will be lost. Here in it is I have not written four s. Four s is two except in chromium and copper is s one. Here it is automatically two. Am I right? So we need to lose two electrons. So I mean, two two electron will be lost from here. It will remain intact. One two one two one one one. 
am i right so what's the pen the it is a complex of octahedral complex mind that octahedral complex will never be if you tell uh, that we will arrange in in this way ligand water here 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 one two three four you will accommodate four ligand only other two ligand no accommodation of two electron so in its a thinking what happen we will higher next energy level it is 3d next energy level is 4d to accommodate next two electron three water one two three four vacancy of four water is there two electron two electron two but two elect water is left am i right for two water we are hiring 4d now we will make habitation one two three four five six up to this much it will be hybridized sp3 sp 3 d 2 how much 1 2 3 4 5 6 so 6 sp 3 d 2 hybridized orbital is there now you enter water 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 2 dot 2 dot 2 dot 2 dot 2 electron this is your complex nickel hexa aqua nickel complex emirate so from this we have come to know that it has had or utilized outer d orbital and this complex is called outer orbital complex it is weak ligand hence unpaired electron is more so more the unpaired electron it is high spin so we have got more unpaired electron number two more paramagnetic number three it is high spin complex because more the unpaired electron high spin less than unpaired low spin and value of mu is equal to how much unpaired one two three again value equal to 3.8 a m bore magneton it is outer orbital complex it is outer orbit complex we have got a lots of answer only if you know balance bond theory or it is habitation you can answer a lot of things let me with a very speedy form we will just explain dsp2 hybridization i'll take an example of copper the configuration of copper i have shown you already already it is s1 and cd10 s1 and cd10 it is known to you already i have answered and it is acceleration state it is 0 4 0 equal to 0 copper 2 equal to copper there copper 2 is equal to copper 2 plus am i right so let me draw in a speedy mode very easy way 1 2 3 4 and this is 1 and this is 1 2 3 and this is equal to 3d 4s and 4p how many electron will put how many electron we need to put 3d 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 1 2 3 4 5 singly then 6 7 8 9 10 all are paired up and last one is one s1 am i right now this is simple copper now we need copper 2 plus what is copper 2 plus very speedy form we are writing just you see uh, i think you will not find any difficulties in understanding see how many return is, is to be lost out from 2 2 2 2 so one is from here other from here so how much electron one two one two one two one two here one and here no electron so we have lost out all electron now you can tell uh, the sir 
we can use SN3P so that 4 ammonia will be entered. No, because it is DSP2, it is square planar, experimentally found it is square planar complex. It is not tetrahedral. Square planar means all are in the same plane and tetrahedral means three are in same planes and fourth is perpendicular to this one. A lot of difference in the structure. Am I right? So, what will we do? We can't put here. If we put uh, water, ammonia here, ammonia here, ammonia, two electron, two electron, two electron of ammonia will get sp3, but it will not. Now, what will you do? We will rearrange, rearrange. How rearrangement? We just transfer this electron to p. So, what occurs? You see, beauty, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. This is back end, and this is this. And this is here, one, two, and this electron. You may ask, why not this electron be transferred to this? No, energetically, the transfer occurs D to P. More or less same energy, it is energy gap is high, so electron cannot be transferred to this one. In bonding, I have told you the metal bonding, one carbon to metal, and metal to carbon P, metal D and carbon P, D, P, pi. So D and P, Transition of electron occurs not S. Hence, one electron is transferred to 4P, not in 4S. Now, what we do here is we now have it as 1, 2, how much? 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. This much. So, what you get here? 1D, 1S, 2P, 1, 2, 4, 4. D to S hybridized or bit. Now you enter in each water two dot water two dot water two dot you will get this complex. Am I right? So here you will find the square planar complex is like this in a very speedy way. I have told you. And for uh, SP3 hybridizing, you 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 just uh, Try out this. I am not showing all this. Or MN 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 CL four um two. You try. You will find this is SP three. I am not describing this due to time. So because a lot of things today, I will summarize here. And in next class, I will give you a lots of conceptual question and entrance exam questions. I will solve out. So my next point is um. Uh, what is the drawback of balance bond theory? Limitation of balance bond theory. It cannot the origin of absorption spectra. It cannot explain why different complex with same metal show different color. Different complex with same metal, so different color it can't explain. It cannot explain why some complexes are high spin complex and others are low spin complex. Number four, it cannot explain the relative stability of complexes. Two or three complexes are given and you are asked which one is most stable, which one is less stable, which are least stable. 
that theory of Bellasman theory cannot explain that Bellasman theory cannot explain original adjustment spectra it cannot explain why different complexes with the same metals for different color it can't explain why some complexes are highly high spin complex and some complexes are low spin complex it cannot explain the relative stability of the complex these are the drawbacks Now very often minority follow this part again very 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 important application. In a very short way, I am telling you below, don't skip, these are the point from where questions are very often asked. Answer estimations of hard water, hard water content, calcium positive, 2 positive and magnesium 2 positive, that can be estimated with, with, estimated with, estimated with eta, estimated with eta, which form complexes with calcium and magnesium. And hemoglobin content, human beings, blood hemoglobin contents, are as two positive iron and chlorophyll contains, magnesium positive vitamin B12 contents cover. Very common questions asked from here. Nickel is estimated, nickel is confirmed by dimethyl DMG, dimethyl glyoxam. When uh, dimethyl glyoxam is uh, mixed with the um, uh, salt containing nickel two positive ion, it gives a blood red color. And due to blood red color is due to the complex form um, uh, with nickel by dimethyl glyoxam and cis platin i have already mentioned in the um, earlier chapter the cis platin is used as a chemotherapy for cancer today again i will another uh, uh, i tell you another comp uh, compound which is salt which is also used as a chemotherapy which is better than this uh, cis platin and this is jessa uh, j e i s c jessi salt sometimes it is called jessi salt I will explain it later on. Very often, question asks from here. Just is salt. What is just is salt? What is its hybridization? What is its composition? And what is its carbon double bond, carbon bond length in metal? Lots of question asks in entrance. I will bit by bit explain minutely follow. Now, crystal field splitting, balance bond after this crystal field splitting, crystal field splitting or crystal field theory. What is splitting? Mind that ligand field theory is uh, where, where it is uh, ligand is used as a ligand and uh, bond is a um, um, metal to ligand bond. It is a covalent coordinate bond occurs. Am I right? But in case of crystal field theory, here the metal and ligand interaction is chiefly assumed as an electrostatic attraction. So when electron is involved in bonding, what's happened? And that consequences or outcome of the approach of the ligand towards a uh, degenerate d orbital is explained by crystal field theory. First of all, I am telling d level d orbitals are five energy level. All the levels are degenerate. What is degenerate mean? Means they are equal in energy almost before ligand approach. Metal NF5 levels are degenerate. Now, what happened? Now, what happened? When this level, when ligand starts approaching towards them, ligand starts, ligands start approaching towards the degenerate or equal energy level, then due to the crystal field splitting occurs due to repulsion or electron, electron repulsion, an electric field is generated, and this field generation of field cause splitting in this field and uh, that level rises a bit high i am not writing this one i am not showing a bit high and then splits i am directly showing you some two parts goes there and three parts this is called t2g this is called eg and this is energy gap here actually it is energy is called del no octahedral it is for octahedral crystal field spreading, octahedral crystal may be T below above this. What happened? Actually, I am in short, I am telling what is D, D X Y, D Y Z, D Z X, D X square minus Y square, D Z square. These are the five energy level is this. Now, what happened? 
this four, this four, uh, uh, this three are x y y y z z x are in x y plane y z z x plane in plane, and other two are above the plane and below the plane. This is above the plane, above the plane, and this is below the plane. So these two d x square and y square and d z square, these are above and below. They are free. When ligand approaches, very often they repel towards d x square, d y z d x square y square d z square among all this. And due to this, they preferably ligand preferably attack to the free states. Free energy uh, energy level of D. These are free above and below. These are free free space in space. So that repulsion occurs more. Energy becomes more. And due to this, there is a uh, change in energy occurs. And due to this, the disruption or splitting occurs. D X Y Z. This is D X Y D Y Z D Z X and D S square Y square and D Z square. It is above. It is below. In this way, splitting occurs, energy gap occurs. So this is called crystal field splitting due to the electronic interaction between the metal and the ligand, uh, and whereby E G level is attacked or repelled more than E T two G. Energy gaps occurs, energy difference occurs, degeneracy disrupted, and that breaks up into two state to minimize the energy gap stability. This is called crystal field splitting, and already I have mentioned if the ligand is strong, gap is more pairing start. If the ligand is weak, gap is less, unpaired electron will remain more. Am I right? So earlier I have mentioned this is crystal field theory, and all the difference it is octahedral. Now if it is tetrahedral, then these two will be below and three will be above. This is the difference octahedral and. I am not explaining too much about the crystal field splitting, and I am jumping over to I have earlier earlier bonded the balance bond theory could not explain the stability of the complexes. Now I will tell that the crystal field splitting is able to explain the stability of the matter. Number one, stability of complexes. Stability of complexes. Number first of one, you may ask in the exam entrance exam. They they, they will you will be given a, a number of the complex and you will be asked range increasing order of the stability, decreasing order of the stability. Which one is most stable? Which is less stable? You have to apply your the tensor. Now what central metal charge? If the charge of central metal is more, it is more stable. More the charge, more the charge, more is the stability of the complexes. So if you were asked, then these two, these two are the complex. You ask which one is more stable, which one is less stable. Just to find out the oxidation state, here is equal to uh, minus six is equal to four, four, four. It is Fe two, and here six, six, six minus six. It is minus three, um, um, uh, minus six plus three. That it is three. So which metal has more charge? This metal complex met having this C and group is more stable. Hence, more this charge on the charge on the central metal in the complexes more in the stability. So this is more stable. This one first one is over. Very simple. You see. Here you are asked if the ligand is more basic. More basic is the lone pair of the ligand is more easily available to donate to the central metal. If the basicity of ligand is more, more e is with more is the ease of uh, 
making bond with the metal by donating this lone pair. So with more ease, it can donate the lone pair to the metal, it can make the bond. Am I right? So more is the basic of the ligand, more the basicity of the ligand, more is the strength. So CN is more basic than ammonia, same. This is more stable, this one. So this is two. Now, what is third? If the ligand is chelating, if the ligand is chelating, that is ring. Uh, here you see um, hexamine nickel cation and uh, ENT. Here it is a chelating ligand which can make a ligand, uh, make a ring. So if there is a possibility ring, the energy is less, stability is more. So if the ligand is chelating, then stability is more. Another I have left is EN number. In the first class, probably I have told you effective atomic number if any of this factor does not work to find out the stability you apply effective atomic number what is effective atomic number atomic number of the sample set. you 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 assume any complex you write its effective atomic number means atomic number of the central metal atomic number of metal and you minus oxidation state you find out oxidation to minus it plus what is the coordination number? It is 6. Then 2 into number of coordination number. You will get a number and you compare it whether it is uh, noble gas configuration, whether it is uh, 10, 8, 18, 36, 86, like this, 54, 86, like this. If the EN value corresponds to noble gas, atomic number then it is stable and if it is not noble gas configuration number uh, noble gas atomic number then it is not stable it is another way of finding the stability of the metal compound very often question and uh, of appears in entrance exam minutely follow this the last part of today, today's class is again very important which is organometallic compound organo metallic compound today i will tell you something that always in our organic chemistry we, we, we see organic or organometallic compound is rmgx what is rmgx h3 mg br is organometallic compound where it is a metal it is a metal and carbon is metal metal non-metal bond am i right magnesium and this is carbon this is ch3 and this is bond. metal non-metal bond we know this is organic but what is organometallic compound? This is metal, non-metal. Yes, it is correct. One type. Number type. Metalloid, non-metal. You may tell this it is. I have told something now. New. Uh, maybe metal. Metal, metal, three types. Metal, non-metal. Example is R, M, G, X, where R is carbon compound, carbon, and this metalloid is equal to tetra alkyl Si. It will be correct way of writing. And uh, it is non metal, it is metalloid, metalloid carbon, it is non metal, non metal carbon, and first one is it is metal. So, these are the different type of Kigna We will not be concerned with this one, but next and last part is too much important for your knowledge. Just I have shown you different type of Kigna reagent. Now, Gignard bond, 
Gignard reagents are three types. One is sigma bonded, other is pi bonded, other is sigma and pi bonded. Sigma bonded is RMGX. Here C, 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 H3, C, CMG. Sigma bond is single bond, sigma bond is there. What is pi bonded? Pi bonded is very often question comes. So interesting fact is that this is sigma bonded dollar sigma bonded this is pi bonded pi bonded uh, uh, that is uh, Serosine, uh, iron is here. Here, benzene to ring in coming is there, dibenzene chromium or chromium. So, it is eta 5, eta 5 means fibrin compound, eta 5, C5, H5, it is another representation. Either you can write ferrocene or you can write this, like why is this was, or it is dibenzene chromium or chromium eta 6 means 6 member ring is there, or carbon 6 and hydrogen 6. These are all pi bond because it has linked with the metal with the pi bond. Now, another important important thing very often comes uh, uh, um, uh, this type C nico4 type is called sigma and pi bond both both bond are, there are two types of bond here occurs when nickel uh, when um, it is bonded with this there are four i am showing this one so there is two types of bonding one is that carbon with the metal carbon with metal it is sigma bond and d of metal field u of batten and back end p pi back end p pi here back end p pi star antibonding so d p pi bonding so that is pi one ligand bonds with metal is sigma and metal back bonds with the back end Antibonding orbital of carbon P. It gives electron to the metal. Um, peculiar behavior. Bonding, back bonding. And it is a very in interesting point where question asks. CC double bond in free, say X. In free state, X. And CC double bond bonded with the metal, say Y. Whose bond length is more? Answer, bonded with Y is more. Because CC double bond is triple bond multiplicity is more shorter is the length when it is in free when it is bonded then what's happen the one times carbon donates electron through sigma bonding and other times metal d orbital this antibonding of p when ntp is populated by the electron donated by the d orbital so number of electron in the antibonding increases when electron antibonding increases bonding decreases so when it is bonded with the nickel the cco bond y will be greater very often question asks in entrance the last part of this one is Jesse salt. Very often it is asked, what is Jesse salt?
now i am showing you one important characteristic it is one of the first uh organometallic compound with alkene and jesse is a name william christopher william christopher jesse was the first person who gave this salt hence it is called jesse salt and this jesse salt is very important as a chemotherapy used is chemotherapy in cancer disease so now what is the structure it is dsp2 bond angle is 90 degree now a question in entrance very often comes when cc double bond is i think 134 armstrong and is in in free state is this much now what is this bond angle c double bond c will become when it is bonded with jesse salt answer it will be increased because here this is back bonding when carbon and carbon this is sigma bond carbon and carbon sigma bond with the metal and metal d orbital to the anti bonding of p pi anti bonding popular electron is increasing so bond order is decreasing in bonding with the salt bond order will increase so during the bonding c double bond c bond order is decreased and in individual bond length is small a question very often asks last part of the question today's is a uh, uses will kinson very often comes in exam entrance exam will concern catalyst the it is polydentate is triphenyl phosphine chloro uh, rhodium one it is wilkinson catalyst very often question comes name and its structure and what is its use it is a homo lytic catalyst and what is its used used in the hydrogenation of alkene that is alkene to alkane hydrogenation hydrogen is added in with the help of this complex catalyst is called wilkinson catalyst halogenation reaction it is used this homogeneous catalyst and next and the last is jiglar nata catalyst very important don't forget to learn this jiglar nata catalyst transition trichloride plus tri alkyl aluminum sometimes it is written in this way trichloride of transition metal specially titanium trichloride and tri alkyl aluminum is called jiglar nata catalyst and it is hetero hetrolytic catalyst and it is used in polymerization reaction polymerization reaction this is all about of today's class hope you have enjoyed the class and it is very very interesting for exam point of view please go through the class for your neat on class exams
Thanks a lot for watching the class. In my next class, I will discuss a lots of competitive exam solution. Please watch my video. Thanks a lot for watching the video.